Western Development Museum was founded in the 1940s and our mandate of the Western Development Museum is to collect or purchase or acquire by whatever it means um, items relating to the history of Saskatchewan. So whether it's tractors or trucks or tools and equipment or clothing, um, whatever relates to the heritage of our province. Most people are aware that we have four locations of the museum in Yorkton, Moose Jaw, North Battleford and Saskatoon. But few people realize that we also have a fifth facility and that's the Curatorial Centre. The Curatorial Centre includes what you see behind me. This is a portion, a small portion of our storage. It's a centralized storage for all four branches of the Western Development Museum. And at any given time, probably about a third at least of our artifacts are in storage. And we have about 88,000 artifacts in total uh, for the whole system. Our Winning the Prairie Gamble exhibit, the last few years we rotated out about at least 1,500 artifacts that were previously in storage here at the Curatorial Centre have been moved out onto exhibit and other ones come back to storage. So we try and make sure that artifacts that uh, are, are restored or, or you know, ready to go are, are seen by the public. The other part of this building includes our administration uh, building, which um, we have all of our curatorial staff. So that includes our collections department and conservation. That includes our education programming department. And that includes our research and our library. That includes our marketing department. That includes fundraiser. Our fundraiser works out of this building. And our exhibits department, the you know, very important function that we perform here at the Curatorial Centre. All the exhibits that people visit at the, all four of our locations are built here and then moved out into the uh, museums. Part of our mandate is to collect and preserve artifacts relating to Saskatchewan's history, and Saskatchewan's history isn't all old. Saskatchewan's history is yesterday. So we are collecting items that are representative of living in the province back as far back as the 1800s. Each piece tells a story. Um, here at the WDM we have two types of artifacts. Uh, we have extension artifacts and what I consider academic artifacts in the back. The extension artifacts tell a story by operating. You can see an old steam tractor putting down the street. You get an understanding of what it is, what it does. Uh, whereas the artifacts that we have like here and in the back, they tell their story by what they are. Um, they're unrestored. Uh, if you want to know how a car was painted in 1910, we have examples of that. Uh, if you want to know what kind of bolts they used, uh, we haven't restored it. By uh, conserving it, we just take uh, care of it and we put it into a state of preservation to make sure it doesn't deteriorate any further and we take care of it for future generations. There are a lot of things that we have in the collection that um, tell a particular story, but we're also looking for things from a more recent period. For example, canola was developed in Saskatchewan, and yet we have almost nothing that relates to the development of canola in the province. We have virtually nothing that relates to the development of the air cedar, and that's a Saskatchewan invention. This is a 1918 McLaughlin car, and what we're doing with the car is recreating a story of invention at the University of Saskatchewan between 1917 and 1919. It was two professors from the university, a Dr. McLaurin and a Dr. Gregg. Dr. McLaurin was a chemist, whereby he was experimenting with the straw gas, and Gregg was an um, agricultural engineer. So they combined their talents to work on the project. Apparently it was successful in that they drove down 2nd Avenue in Saskatoon with this car, but it wasn't efficient enough to go to the next stage of production. It took too much straw gas. What we had to do with the car is to clean up the engine compartment and work on the fenders, which were a little bit bumped and worn, but the surface of the car is being preserved as it was. We had to buy new tires and painted it up at the front to uh, 
look like it did in 1918 when the experiments were going on, but we wanted to preserve as much of the original car as possible. So the fittings that are needed to add the balloon actually fit right into places that are already on the car. We don't have to damage the car, in other words, to recreate the exhibit. We have to reproduce the big gas bag. Obviously, it looks like a big balloon and we're having to take some unique methods to recreate this because, of course, if we filled it with air, it's not going to stay that way for long. We have many unique pieces in the back, one of a kind. And when we do decide to do a restoration for display, we face the challenge of finding parts. How do you find a part for something that there's only one of and the company doesn't exist anymore? In the case of what I've done here, I've had to replicate an original hubcap that we only have one example of. And of course, we need four of them. I created a mold and cast a reproduction of it out of uh, room temperature vulcanizing rubber. You'll note the gray color. I've infused the uh, uh, material with powdered aluminum and so I take it to a buffing wheel and the aluminum buffs up and looks just like the original. We also have a steam powered car in our collection. We have a homemade wind powered car in our collection. We have an electric car from 1912. So these kinds of things I think are timely subjects for the museum to do um, exhibits. So we're going to have our straw gas car on exhibit hopefully later sometime this year. And I think now with all the interest in alternate forms of energy, this will be a really interesting exhibit for the museum. I deal with the conservation of many different articles in the museum from photographs to paper documents to furniture to glass to ceramics. I get to preserve it for the future, for the future of the museum. And so we try to collect stories as well when we're collecting objects, so we want to preserve both. And so oftentimes the story is entwined with what happened to the object. So like in the New Brunswick Museum, there's a a shovel there that was from World War I. It still had the original soil from the trenches on it, and so that was an issue. They had to save the soil, not, you'd usually try to get rid of it, but in that issue they wanted to save the soil on it because it came from the trenches, so that's like one of those issues. There is a trophy here that is found in England. It was at the dump and the guy working there saw it and thought, oh, he liked, he thought it was cool, so he picked it up. It was a dent-up trophy, and on it, it said Saskatoon, um, 1927, 60th anniversary of Canada. It was uh, for the best peck of flax, I believe. And so he kept it on a shelf, and then a friend of his was coming to Canada. So he's like, oh, here, take this, it should go back. And so it ended up back in the museum, but we don't know how it ended up in England. This one has been here for a while, as in another exhibit, but I, it was uh, full of the original product and it hadn't been opened since it was sealed in 1898 or something. But bugs had got into it all throughout, so all those little holes are from bugs going through. So I emptied it and found a, a little booklet that has not been seen since 1898. <laughs> the title of it is Your Face is a Mirror, Reflecting Health and Disease. <laughs> And so I've been emptying a lot of uh, these little boxes so we can save the container. And since we don't, we're not in the process of saving the food products themselves or chemicals, I get rid of those. There's been people with doctor bags who are like, oh here, this was so-and-so's. You want it? And nobody's opened it and it's just full of drugs and chemicals that the doctor had originally. So it's an actual very big health hazard there. They just don't know. Tell you a little bit about them as they come past, and uh, we'll try to keep you entertained here, Will. So come on down, folks, and in a few minutes we'll get a parade going here for you, and uh, just enjoy yourself. The Western Development Museum not only preserves artifacts, we also preserve some of the trades that go with them. 
For, so annually we offer courses in blacksmithing, wheel riding, buggy seat reupholstery, and steam traction engine operation. Our volunteers are crucial to what we do here at the Western Development Museum, both in this building, in the Curatorial Centre, in the behind the scenes, and also on the ground in our, in our four museums. Our volunteers come from all walks of life. They bring us all sorts of skill sets, and they're involved in whatever, whatever kinds of things interest them or whatever kinds of places we can put their skills to use. We have hundreds of volunteers that volunteer doing everything from helping with school programs to baking cookies for school programs to helping out in our conservation lab, cleaning artifacts, to helping catalog our artifacts, and the list goes on and on and on. At the Western Development Museum we have a number of uh, partnerships, whether it be uh, with educational institutions such as the university or the school boards. As well, we have a number of business partners who act as sponsors for some of our exhibits. And then just some smaller businesses that have helped us out in developing uh, various exhibits at the Western Development Museum. So we're very much um, grateful for the partnerships that we have out there in the community. Every department relies on support of funding from many, many different sources. It wouldn't be possible to do that work and to make the displays and restore the artifacts and share these artifacts with people who care so much about the heritage of our province that they've donated them to the museum without the support of people and companies and individuals. In order to make sure that the magical experience that people have when they come to the museum is just as great the next time as it was the last time, we need to make sure that we've uh, got funding in place. So there's, uh, there's a huge amount of work um, at the museum. Of course, there's uh, such a huge range of artifacts and the skills required to restore and um, display things to their full potential. The Western Development Museum is the keeper of the collective heritage of Saskatchewan and uh, so that's, that's our role and we're thrilled to work with, uh, with partners all across the province to make sure that we can continue to share those stories. So if you're interested in learning more about the Western Development Museum, I invite you to visit us at any one of our five locations, whether it be Moose Jaw, Yorkton, North Battleford, or Saskatoon, or Curatorial Centre. And um, also check out our website, it's wdm.ca. We're also on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, we're engaged in social media, thanks to some of our younger employees here. So by all means, get connected with the Western Development Museum, and thank you.